This is the Kalugo. It's going to replace the Honey Badger. It's just as fast as the freaking Honey Badger, but it's so small. Now, you know, I saw some idiots out there reviewing this PCTU100 from Lee and Lee. And those idiots on the internet, a lot of them said that it was too small. It was just too small. I don't understand what you know. It's too small. And then they said, you know, why don't we use the Bit Phoenix Prodigy, which is like 18 times the size of this. So I took a lot of the stuff out of the Bit Phoenix Prodigy, the Bit Phoenix, the Bit Phoenix Prodigy, and I put them into the uh, TU100, the PCTU100 here. It's way smaller. I've got a 760 in here. I've got an i5 in here, and I may upgrade to an i7. But this is going to be our mobile editing gaming rig, and you can too. So I'm gonna put the Kaluga over here and just tell you what's in here. I also want to note that this thing is whisper quiet, and I was. A bit shocked at how quiet it was when I first pressed the power button. I was like, oh, I don't know if this thing's on or not. So the fan that Lee and Lee has in here, I've got a Noctua cooler uh, on the CPU. That's also a nice fan. So yeah, it's just, I'm a fan of this thing. All right, so let's talk about what we put into this mobile system. First off, we started off with an MSI motherboard. I got the MSI Z87i Gaming AC. Let me go ahead and get my gripe out of the way. The CPU socket is too close to the PCI Express socket. Luckily for us, we're using a heatsink that fits just fine, but if you're gonna use a tower heatsink or a heatsink that has fins that extend, it's going to bump into the graphics card. Uh, most water cooling solutions are gonna be just fine, but that's my only gripe, the placement of the CPU socket. There may be another gripe, but I don't know. Uh, the MSI Z87i Gaming AC um, does feature a killer NIC. It's the 2200, I believe. Yeah, the E2200 NIC. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, we also have, and that, that has like, packet prioritization and all that stuff. Uh, it also has uh, Intel Wireless AC on board, and it's got two antennas and two radios in there. It's, you know, five gigahertz and all that fancy stuff. What else? Is, what else is cool about this? Oh yeah, we do have um, some decent onboard sound that can power, you know, a good set of headphones. I tried it out with my Biodynamic DT 880s. This is the premiums. This is a 600 ohm version, and it will power those. There's an onboard um, headphone amp. Uh, one thing I want to note, and I tried this with. With uh, these headphones, I tried this with several other 32 ohm um, headphones, and also my uh, A78 or whatever ohm Sony MDR7506. Uh, I tried it out with those as well. The bass is always louder out of every headphone, except for this one. This one is about about the same, but almost every headphone that I plug into it, the bass is way uh, louder out of the back port than the front port. So I don't know if that's something to do with the cable that came with this. I'm thinking it may be the way the headphone amp works. Maybe the back has more power. Uh, this does have gold, you know, plated plugs in the back and all that fanciness. So just know that you'll have a much better sound experience if you're using the back port with your headphones than the front port. Uh, but it's also nice uh, because I, I tried this against a standalone a DAC, a completely transparent DAC, and the sound quality was really, I mean, if you if you made me close my eyes and, and do a double blind test, I probably could not tell you which one I was listening to as long as you plugged up to the back. So it's, it, that's pretty good, especially for a decent set of headphones. Now the CPU, we've got the 4670, the i5-4670 from Intel. It's the non-K part. It's got the VTD extensions, which I, which I like, and the K parts for some reason don't have because they want you to, you know, buy one or the other. Um, but I'm not going to be overclocking this because I'm going to be using a low profile cooler and I don't want it to get too hot in there. I may upgrade to the 4770K, but I'm gonna see how the i5 does with editing first before I do that. Uh, also, the i5 is gonna be pretty much the same speed at, uh, the, as, you know, as the uh, 4770 when we're talking about gaming. You might lose one FPS, but it's 100 bucks cheaper, so I, I really do want it for rendering and video editing and productivity, but it saves 100 bucks, so it was on sale, i5. And if you guys are building one of your own and, and you know, you're know you mainly going to be using this as a mobile gaming rig, I'm going to recommend the i5 and use the extra 100 bucks for the GPU or RAM or something else. All right, the GPU, very important part. The new MSI, um, the GTX 760 ITX version. Yes, it's an ITX graphics card. It's 
freaking tiny. So um, it's a, a nice overclocked 760. And if you guys want to know more about the motherboard and, and the graphics card, you can just click on the screen. I've already done a video uh, just you know showcasing some of the technology on the two of them. Uh, but it essentially has a fancy fan that's sort of an impeller and a blower at the same time. Uh, does a good job of uh, dissipating heat. It stays nice and quiet. When you're in games, it does ramp up a little bit. But the, the thing is freaking tiny. I mean, it, it fits in here with like an inch and a half to spare, and it's a 760. Overclocked 760. Uh, beyond that, there's three different modes that you can choose. There's like silent gaming and then OC mode that you can choose from, and it'll change the clock. So instead of forcing you to buy three different graphics cards at three different clock speeds like a lot of people do, they're giving you this one graphics card and letting you pick how hot and fast you want it to go or how cool and quiet you want it. It's kind of cool. For the hard drive, we've got the ADATA XPG SX910. Slightly better than the 900 because it's a 910 and that's a higher number. It's like literally about the same speed as that one. It's their you know, most premium drive, um, a little better in quality than the Premier Pro drive that they have out, but that one's also decent. If you see one you know, on sale for a good price, don't hesitate to grab that one. I just grabbed the SX910 because it's my favorite. And if it's my favorite, I'm gonna buy it. So we got one of those. And that's gonna be the uh, you know, OS and all that. And just to have you know, some extra storage, I grabbed a one terabyte, I should have grabbed a two terabyte drive because we're going to be generating videos on this. I'll have an external, I've got the ADATA external uh, one terabyte USB 3 drive. We'll use that one as well. So I got a one terabyte 2.5 um, inch HGST drive. Now you're going to have to get a 2.5 inch drive, so you need like the laptop size drive. And there's only really three spots to put drives in here. You can't really get too creative with that. You can use a couple SSDs and a hard drive or two mechanical hard drives and an SSD, you know. but we just grabbed a one terabyte for now, and that's mostly going to be games. I'll probably be using the external storage for a lot of the, the videos that we edit. And we can dump them to the NAS when we get home, so we'll be fine with one terabyte. But, you know, it's cheap. It was like 75 bucks. I was looking for some RAM, and I was like, I don't have any RAM. And then I looked in the Honey Badger, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll be using this more than the Honey Badger. So I pulled uh, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator uh, memory out of there, and it, it runs at 1866, so it'll be just fine for this. Um, so that's going to be the RAM in this. I'm not sure what I would have, you know, if I had to buy RAM, I'm not sure what I would have got, but the Corsair is going to be totally fine. The power supply was um, the, probably the most difficult thing to, to deal with because there's not a lot on the market. So I guess that makes it easy because you only really have one choice. It's difficult for me because I want to, you know, browse and get some choices, but um, luckily it's a Silverstone and it's 80 plus bronze. It's a 450 watt um, Silverstone 80 plus bronze. And the one I got is non-modular because it was like 75 bucks. But the thing I like about this is it's got a nice strong 12 volt rail with 36 amps on that 12 volt rail and that's going to be just fine for the 760. It's going to keep everything in here uh, completely powered with a little bit to spare. So that, that'll be, I have no complaints whatsoever with this. If you want to spend a little bit more money you can get um, the modular version and it's fully modular. So if you're building something like this, a modular might have been nicer. When I, after I bought that, I was like, wait a minute, should I have spent the extra 25 bucks to get the modular? But I've got all the cables tucked away. It should be okay. Everything should be fine. Uh, the cooling solution I'm using on this right side there, that's the Noctua uh, NHL9i. It's completely flat. It's one of the easiest um, to install cooling units out there because it's just, it's, it's got like four thumb screws and you set it on top of the CPU and you screw the four thumb screws on to the other side and you're done. It's stupid easy. So this is it. Be taking this uh, with us when we go anywhere by car. I'm not sure, we may be able to fit this in an airplane, but I, I would probably want to take the graphics card out if I'm traveling by plane, just in case it gets bumped around. But I don't know, this might fit on a carry-on. What do you think? Yeah. This could be the carry-on. This could be the carry-on. Just throw and throw like a monitor in your backpack, and this is way better than a laptop, in I'd my opinion. I'd be more comfortable with that than people that just like throw luggage everywhere, you know? Yeah, this could be your carry-on right here if you're traveling. So um, who knows? We'll, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to take it to CES, but maybe. That'd be kind of cool. We'll take it to PAX. Definitely gonna be a PAX with that thing. So that's the Kalugo. And this is the end of the video. You guys should uh, subscribe. Hey, people out there that didn't subscribe earlier, should subscribe now. We got other videos too. They're better. <laughs> yeah, this is the end of it. Uh, thanks, subscribe, go comment, click on some shit, bye.
like way crooked. <laughs> this is how it goes. Satan! <laughs> what? I like watching people struggle. <laughs> I just sounded like the right thing to say even though it's bad grammar. <laughs> Our mobile editing rig, and you can too. <laughs> so, what is this thing called again? The Kaluga, all right? About the same thing. That the back You won't let me make that note. No, that's ruined. Uh, that's that is ruined. no. I'll let you do that. Yes, there it is. Look, it's us. You can see the relation. December twenty thirteen. It's us. Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What's the other shit? MySpace. MySpace. MySpace 2013. So that's it. That's the uh, the Wulong. It's Kaluga. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's that. Kaluga. Who decided to call it a Kaluga? No one. No one can remember the word Kaluga.